Hey Cardinals fans, and welcome to Cardinals Game Day, your home for UIW football reviews, news, and previews. My name is Chris Reyes. And my name is Rory Deer. Well Chris, number 11 in East State came to San Antonio, and it's fair to say that they were the heavy favorites going in. They managed to get the win, but I'm pretty sure they would not have expected the scoreline to be 41-21 at the final whistle as it was. Absolutely. The Cardinals offense really got going, and the defense had another great game. And honestly, the most surprising statistic of the game was the giveaway takeaway factor. The Cardinals turned the ball over a total of six times and still managed to stay within three scores. And a lot of that comes down to our offense finally finding a groove. Quarterback Jordan Selfer capitalized on his first ever career start, putting up at very respectable numbers. He went 17 to 41 for 254 yards with two touchdowns passing. He also threw four interceptions, but he managed to score a rushing touchdown as well. The offense finally managed to click on and stay on the field. In the absence of the injured Casey Jennings, we saw a number of receivers play very solid games. Notable receivers included Cody Edwards, who made four receptions for 68 yards, John Oglesby with three receptions for 24 yards and a touchdown, Jordan Hicks, who made one reception for 52 yards and a touchdown, and rounding out the receivers, tight end Cole Wick, who made two receptions for a total of 45 yards. The passing game was definitely strong. However, we saw a few issues with our running game. Junior Sessions carried the ball a total of 16 times, making 46 yards on the ground, which is an average of about 2.8 yards per carry. Broderick Reeves, on the other hand, he had five total carries and he ended the game in the negatives, losing a total of 11 yards on the day. Not very good, but he'll look to improve next week. Now moving on, Ramo Cotto Jr. had yet another solid game from the special team's perspective. He punted the ball four times for 156 yards and made all three of his extra point attempts. And he also pulled off a fake punt that was good for a 16-yard first down. The offense actually gained more yards than McNeese State did, a statistic almost no one would have expected going into the game. Increased offensive production and time of possession really helped the defense keep up their intensity throughout the game. Yeah, that's fair to say. The defense had a typically started game as well and then struggled to maintain their consistency as they tired from a lack of offensive production. It was a little concerning in the second quarter, but they came out ready to play again in the third, and the offense hit a spark around the same time. For sure. It was great to see both sides of the ball really hitting their stride for probably only the second time that we've seen this season. But this time, it was against the number 11 team in the FCS. It showed great signs for the last few games of the season. They managed to hold a quarterback, Daniel Sims, to a total of 97 yards passing. Offensively, the standout player for the Cowboys was running back Dylan Long who rushed 11 times for 60 yards and three touchdowns. Defensively, their standout was Brent Spikes, who had three picks for 148 yards and one touchdown. Looking ahead to this week's game with the Nickel State Colonels in Thibodeau, Louisiana, it's likely going to be a pretty interesting game. The Colonels are currently winless on the season, and they've been conceding over 50 points and 500 yards a game defensively. On the offensive side of the ball, they average about 267 yards per game, and they split time between two quarterbacks. The leading rusher on the season is Michael Henry, who averages 5.6 yards per carry and has made 645 yards on the season. Bo A. Bear started a quarterback last game for the Colonels and posted a 186-yard game, including one touchdown. So, Rory, what do you think the Colonels are going to have to do this week to get the win against the Colonels? I think uh, it's going to be a lot on our offense because we, we've seen throughout this season we usually have one part of the offense play really well and the other not so much. Last week. Uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of a running game, but our passing game was great. A couple weeks before that, we were very run dominant. Uh, so I think what I'm looking for today, or this week, sorry, is for both sides of the offense to come out strong and set the tone for the last couple games because next week, we play Sam Houston State. It's senior night, last term game of the season, and Sam Houston State have beaten McNeese so far this season, and they've always been a very solid team. So. This is an opportunity for us to really iron the kinks out in our offense. And there's been a couple injuries in the offensive line. I think that's going to change up a bit. But we saw some of the younger guys come in, spend a bit of time in the offense this week. And they look pretty good. So there shouldn't really be a reason that we can't get our passing and running games going. It needs to happen this week. Yeah, I think we're going to take out this, secure this one on the road against the Colonels and not allow them to get their first one of the season. And Jordan Selfo, young quarterback, Starting for the second time of the season, going on the road in a hostile environment, we'll see how he takes care of it. Yeah, well, it's almost a homecoming for the uh, Louisiana native Jordan Selfer, and I'd like to see the way that works out for him. 
Well, Cardinals fans, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week when we will break down the Nickel State game and look forward to the last home game of the season against Sam Houston State right here at Benson Stadium on the 8th of November. Until next time, my name is Rory Dew. And I'm Chris Reyes. See you all next week, and let's go Cardinals.